about to start. everyone. Welcome to a new episode of No Conduct Radio. Today we're talking about how to keep your relationship alive when life gets busy. So by that we mean like, you know, how do you keep it fresh and y'all just don't wander apart? How do you um, find time for fun? How do you find time for dates? And, you know, because you don't want to just because life got busy, you don't want to end up breaking up or going separate ways or anything like that. So we're talking about how to keep your relationship together when your life gets busy, especially in this day and age, in this economy where, you know, everybody's working and uh, you may be working different shifts. Uh, You know, you may be working and then have kids and that takes up more time because kids kids are a whole other job. So how do you keep your relationship going? How do you keep it alive? How do you keep the spice in your relationship when life gets busy? And we're also taking your questions on that where, surprisingly, we did get a lot of questions about that. Um, So right now, I'm the only one here. I have no idea where the rest of my hosts are, (laughs) but uh, I'm the only one here. Um, We'll also be hearing from our sponsors um, just movie posters and a book, Forgotten by the Sun, by Celeste Eisman. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Normally at this point in time, I would be asking, how's everyone doing? But being that I'm the only one here, I guess I can't ask that question. So in the meantime, I guess I'm going to talk about uh, current news, which is, I don't know if you all have heard about uh, the testing scam. So a lot of rich people and even some famous people, which surprised me, um, have been basically bribing colleges to let their children in and also paying for someone to take the tests for their children. So, um, and it, it's, it's amazing who who's doing this because you know, I know the woman from Full House. She was she was in Full House. She was she played Becky, I think. Uh, so actually, here's something. So from Fox News, um, Lori Logling's daughter Olivia Jade was abo- uh, was aboard a USC official's yacht in Bahamas when mom was charged. So apparently, Lori Loughlin, uh was charged. I think that's how you say her name, Lachlan Loughlin, I don't know. Um, was charged as well as um, a couple other people were charged. And I'll go back. It says over 50 people, actually. And I'll go back and talk about who was charged in this scandal. So Lori Loughlin's daughter, Olivia Jade Giuliani, was spending spring break on a University of Southern California official's yacht. Oh, my God. The Universal, the University of Southern California has a yacht? Is that school that prominent? Wow. Um, uh, the University of Southern California official's yacht when her mother was accused Tuesday of involvement in a college admission scheme. Oh, it was somebody who worked at USC. Never mind. Giuliani 19 was on Rick Caruso's luxury yacht Invictus in the Bahamas, the report said. Caruso is chairman of USC's board of trustees. Giuliani, who currently currently attends USC, uh, was with Caruso's daughter, Gianna, and several other friends, the outlet reported. And basically... You know, she was there, and her mother uh, was charged in this cheating scandal. Um, but as far as the cheating scandal, the I know Lori Loughlin, so uh, she played Becky in Full House, like I said. Um, I know somebody from the real, no, is it the real Housewives? Um, Desperate Housewives. Somebody from Desperate Housewives was charged in that. But I didn't watch Desperate Housewives, so I I don't really know 
the person that was charged in that in terms of desperate housewife. Um, but according to Yahoo News, Felicity Huffman, so she's the one from Des- uh, Desperate Housewives, and Lori Lachlan were charged with mail fraud in the college exam scheme. So what's going on there? Um, it looks like there was about 40 people charged. And uh, let's see. So the scheme involved getting students admitted to elite colleges and helping potential students to cheat on their college entrance entrance exams. Uh, The colleges in question included Georgetown University, Stanford University, UCLA, the University of San Diego, USC, University of Texas, Wake Forest, and Yale. So they were helping students to get into there. Uh, In the arrest warrant, Hoffman and her husband, William H. Macy, allegedly made a purported charitable contribution of $15,000 to KWF to participate in the college college entrance entrance exam cheating scheme on behalf of her oldest daughter. Uh, Hoffman later made arrangements to pursue the scheme a second time for her youngest daughter before deciding not to. The warrant claims that uh, a cooperating witness, the founder of KWF, told Hoffman and Macy that the control, uh, sorry, that he controlled the testing center and could arrange for a third party to purport to proctor uh, their daughter's SAT and secretly correct her answers afterwards. Um, CW1 has advised investigators that Hoffman and her spouse agreed to the plan. So eventually Hoffman's daughter did end up taking the SATs and scored a 1420, which was an improvement of 400 points over her previous uh, previous scores. So I guess, you know, since she got that score, she really didn't need to have someone take it for her to raise the scores or anything like that. So it's just amazing. And my thing is they have money. They have money to be able to afford uh, a, a tutor for their daughter, so I don't know why they would risk going to jail uh, to bribe people to take the daughter's test. That doesn't make sense. You had money to tutor your daughter, because I know me, I don't have that kind of money to bribe anybody, but I'll hire a tutor or sit down and try and teach her myself. There's YouTube now. Everything's on YouTube. <laughs> so, And Shar's here. Hey, Shar. Hey, everyone. I'm so sorry that I'm late. I guess that's my usual. I'm back to my usual. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm glad yeah, to be just here. Yeah, an eye on here. BJ will be here oh, at okay. 7, and I have no idea where Logic is. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's chickens, the ladies. The ladies can handle it. Uh-huh. Okay. Sounds I was good. talking to myself the whole time. So basically oh, what wow. I was telling them <laughs> was, have you heard about that um, that testing scandal that's been going on, and a woman from Full yeah. House got arrested for it. Well, she got charged yeah. for it. I don't know if she got arrested, but she got charged. I actually did hear. I thought there was two, um, two mothers involved, or, or well, there's, there's actually was ex- 40, 40 people, or, 40 oh, people. But in oh. in terms of celebrities, yeah, there's a woman from Desperate Housewives, Felicity Huffman. I don't mm-hmm. know who she is, and then yeah. the Lori Loughlin, the the woman who played. Becky on Full House. Yeah, right. But I mean, this is this is so. Do you think they're all part of the same network of of you know this whole scam thing going, or just independently, just a coincidence? Because all those people, there's a lot of people that are involved. So what do I you mean, think? I mean, Hollywood people really like hang together, so I wouldn't be surprised. I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah, but I'm saying if there's over 40 incidents um, or reports, or at least this can be proven, do you think they're part of a network, all of them, or do you think it's just a coincidence that these other celebrities have got caught and then these, all these other people were involved? Do you think it's all part of the same, like, scam network or something? I don't know what I they think would call it's, it I think it's all part of the same thing. Yeah. I don't know uh, what you're saying. I wow. think it's all part of the same thing. So this could have gone on for much longer before anyone even realized anything. Wow. Yeah, basically. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. How oh did they gosh. even find out? That's my question. 
I mean, there's ways to leak it. Couldn't a student say something that they knew and just in casual conversation not thinking um, maybe the dean was playing golf with one of the teachers or someone else on the committee, you know what I mean? And then he, you know, overheard it. It was like, what? I'm going to, you know, I mean, it could be it could be a number of ways, I would think, you know. So, I mean, when I you're mean, talking about school, there's, there's hundreds of people involved in any particular that even attend any particular school or university, so there's always a lot of ears, is what I'm saying, <clears throat> with, any, with any scandal, you know, so, especially in so that So apparently way. the FBI has been looking into this because they were mm-hmm. recording phone calls between um, a cooperating witness. Of course, they're not going to say who mm-hmm. it is. Between right. a cooperating witness and, like, um, Lori Lachlan. So Lori Lachlan was recorded, recorded at one point saying, so we, so we just, so we had to say, oh, we had to say we made a donation to your foundation, and that's it, end of story. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they had, like, a bug on this guy or whatever. But I'm just, I mean, I know there's different ways to find out about it. I'm just wondering how they found out about it. Right. A leak, like, who, who's, there's a leak out there. There's a, there's a mo. There's a mo. Who's the mo? <laughs> it's too late now, yeah. but it just makes you wonder, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, so what um, else are we talking about today? What's our other topics today? How to keep your relationship alive when life gets busy. In the oh that's what, wow. Yeah, yeah. something everyone so can relate to, I'm sure. Mhm. Yeah. Well, not everyone, but yeah. <laughs> well, anyone who's no, there's some people like anyone who's in a relationship. Well, no, what I'm saying is that we're all we're life affects all of us regardless of our status of being in a relationship or not. I'm saying that so life affects all of us. So therefore, if someone's in a relationship, it's going to affect them. I mean, there's just no way around it. It's life happens. You know, it's just how you deal with it. Because it will happen. It'll it can be the bigger elephant in the room. You know. And it could be a problem for people that don't know how to strategize what's important to them in their their life and the relationship. I mean, that's true, but the reason I was saying not everybody knows is because there are some people who don't they don't do anything. Like either they still live with their parents or their husband or wife is the one who works and they just sit home. They they wouldn't relate because they don't have busy lives. They just sit there. And I'm not talking about stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home dads, because that life can get busy. Oh, I'm talking you know about what? You're right. Nothing. You're right. Yeah, because the way, the, literally what you said makes sense. Okay, so let me just kind of retract in my head. So these are people that are either successful or on their way up, going that direction, and therefore they're especially busy. You know, so it's mostly people that I mean, are just overworking or, you know, working a lot of hours or, or you know, just, I mean, that's what I'm assuming, because you can always hang out with your friends 40, 40 days, 40 nights a week, and that's, I mean, four, well, 40 nights a week, 40 hours a day. Wait, 40 hours a week. Does that make any sense? You can always go hang out with your friends wow. more than you're with your mate. I can't believe how many different yeah. ways I tried to, to spend that. You can always, <laughs> excuse me, okay. you can always <laughs> hang out with your friends more than your mate, and then, therefore, you are still busy and not paying attention to the relationship. So that's why I'm saying, are we probably focusing the question on people that are busy because of career? Or just generally just not around because they're busy, you know. You'd be um, busy doing I other stuff. I think Gambleholics sit at gambling tables for 10 hours a day. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. No, it's fine. I, I was going to say I think in terms of the topic, you know, what we're going to talk about is if mm-hmm. you're busy working or busy taking care of your family and the one person's working or something like that. But then the mm-hmm. questions we have that came in, some of them are asking, you know, what if my significant other is busy with their personal life? So in terms of the question, there's questions like that, what you're talking about. But in terms of the topic, I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about people who are actually doing something with their lives. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what experience do you have in terms of being in a relationship and both of y'all being busy? Has that uh, ever been? I yeah. mean, because you, you yeah. are a model traveling. I'm pretty sure you've 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 gotten into that. 
Oh, of course I have. I mean, okay, see, my thing was a little different. My thing was more like being in the industry, you're gone a lot of hours. And so my thing was that I would never, I always had this rule, I would never date anyone who wasn't in the industry, who wasn't a producer, director, actor, something, only because, or just an actor, yeah, or just or entertainment, only because in a regular relationship with a, a normal, regular person, I shouldn't say normal, a person who just has a general career that's, I guess you can say, I don't know, um, uh, more conservative or something, they they don't understand. They assume that you're cheating because you're on a set for 17 hours, for example. That's perfectly a normal set day. So for me, that was more of an issue with, like, um, you know, it's either me or the career or, I'm, you know, where were you? They're, you're gone all the time. Because not many people, no matter what they do, the average person's not going to be doing anything for that for 17 hours at one particular time. You know what I mean? Unless they just happen to work a lot of hours. And this is kind of sporadic when you're on set. So for me, it was just more like a conflict of that person not understanding my busyness. You know, um, when it's been two of us equally busy, but yet different careers, it is, it's more difficult if there's a child involved. And in my case, there was no child involved. So therefore, it wasn't as hard to figure out how do we spend time together and make this work better. Does that make sense? So that was kind of mm-hmm. like my experience. So from the... Yeah. So from the person who was not understanding your busyness, mm-hmm. he was think he thought you were cheating. Yeah, well, I mean, imagine you could you could be on a set like say even like a commercial set. People don't realize it still takes like five or six hours to shoot one scene, so it could be like up to easily up to seventeen just for two two scenes that day. So by the time I could leave, you know, at the wee hours when it's still dark outside to get to the set, maybe four a.m. But I may not come back until maybe six or seven in the evening, or let's say if I left later and I come back really late. So it's kind of like you're explaining what you're doing, but they don't want to hear that because maybe they're not as busy. They might be home already thinking, what kind of life is this? You know, so of course the cheating as see that's why I have the rule. I wouldn't date anyone out that was out not in the industry because if they're in the industry, they totally get it. I don't have to explain any of that. They totally understand how many hours are involved in promote, promotion and even shooting and all of that. You know, um, I just had someone tell me no woman of mine is going to be a an entertainer. And I'm like, okay, my fault that I stuck around in that relationship for way too long, you know, while that person sat back being envious and not being supportive and not understanding. So, but, but I, I'm the kind of person, in the I support industry, whatever doesn't you do. Doesn't it make it even, doesn't it make it even more busy? No, 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 because they can come along with you, too, and appreciate it and have fun. People that are outside the industry, sometimes they're like, I don't want to do that. They'll, they'll assume it's an excuse for you to flirt to go to a, you know, to a um, networking event, do you know what I mean, or a promotional or whatever, or red carpet or whatever. They'll think it's for you, for your own self-gluttony or whatever, or just to hype yourself. It's weird. It's kind of like if they're in the business, they can't wait to be a part of it just to support you because you're going to do the same thing for them at some point, you know. So they totally get it. It's not, where were you? It's, hey, babe, I, I would love to come along and, and support you, you know, while you're signing autographs or whatever. Like, seriously, that's something I have to do. And so it's not like, well, what time are you going to do that? But why are you going to be gone so long? You know what I mean? I'm sitting here waiting. What time are you coming home? You can't be calling somebody on sets, like, interrupting like that. That's why most people don't even want you. Most directors don't even want your boyfriend there. If you're doing a shoot or if you're on a set, whatever, they don't want boyfriends, ex, whatever, so nobody, because this is what happens. People get jealous. Have you, know, you ever had a boyfriend a lot. or have you ever had a boyfriend or whatever on the set and they got jealous, I guess, of how you were dressing or whatever? Yeah, yeah, I did. I was dumb enough to take the same person I'm talking about that said, um, you know, no one of mine will be an entertainer. So I stuck, stayed in the relationship for way, way too long, all the way from New York and all the way here um, to Nevada. And anyway, so I was on a set and it was so crazy because – he was, like, making such an issue about everything, the clothing, because I did have to put lingerie on some, for some of the scenes, bikinis. It was kind of like a bikini shoot or whatever. But the thing is, we were arguing so bad to where I was crying on the actual pictures, and they came out, and the photographer didn't have a choice. He didn't realize it at the time because he was doing the choo 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 you know, the really quick choo the really, yeah. It's like 500, you know, frames in one second or a minute. So they actually came out really good. I know that sounds crazy. It looked like it was intentional. But the whole thing is as bad. It's a shame that I was, you know, I broke my own rule too. So he, therefore, he didn't support me, and there was arguments. There was jealousy. There was, why are you wearing this? Why are you moving, posing this way? It was just ridiculous. 
you know, I even, I even, the photographer even included him and let him do some scenes with me, or you know, scenes. Like I sound like I'm doing a porno. He'll, he, he encouraged yeah. him to do some, you know, <laughs> some of the. I mean, it just, it just sounded like that, right? But it wasn't. It was just, it was yeah. totally legit. Um, and he loved it. Sure to this it day, was. this person can look back in those pictures and say, "Oh my God, this was an awesome day for me, for him." That was his memory, you know, and I'm in there or in some of them. So it worked out to where, you know, he got something out of it. But the point is, is that when you're not on the same page, period, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what your career is. It does not matter. You just got to be on the same page and don't be with someone who's absolutely not going to support whatever your interests are, whether it's your passion, whether it's your dream, or whether it's just your goals, bucket list, whatever you're going towards or what you are right now and what you want to be. Don't settle for anyone saying that they are not going to support you or accept it. I mean, who are, who is this person to tell you that? You know, focus yeah. on your, your career. That's what you should do anyway. That's what anyone should do before they put all of their <laughs> eggs into the basket of the relationship. What were you saying? No, I was agreeing with you, but, um, I mean, that goes with – if that's that person's goal is to have a career, focus on your goals, basically. Focus on whatever right. goals that you want to, and you need to be with someone who whose goals align with yours, whether your goal is to be rich and have a really extravagant career or just to have a family. You need to be with someone who has the same goals as yours. It's just not going to work out. So, exactly. Um, Very true. What about you? So how, if you don't mind me asking, you don't have to answer this, so oh, being sure. that Charles owns a business, so I know he's really busy, mm-hmm. and you, yeah. I know you work with him, but you still work. How do y'all uh, keep your relationship alive? Because I know he's really busy. Do y'all, other than, I mean, I guess y'all get to see each other because you do work together. So you do get to see each other a lot, correct? Okay, well, that's an interesting question, Kai. You are correct, but there's there's a new, twi- new twist on this that was just – just that I was just informed of literally 20 minutes ago, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to have to follow the progress of it. So here's how it happens. We spend all of our waking days together here at, the, at his, his um, business running it, and so we see each other at home when we wake up in the morning, when we, when, before we go to sleep at night. We spend all of our time together. However, however, we're already busy, already at work, right? Well, then the thing is he just announced to me that he was um, – joining some kind of a fraternity for successful businessmen. And I thought to myself, a fraternity? How old are we again? (laughs) But the (laughs) point is, because of this, it's been taking him away. The little time we do have is what I'm trying to say, with dinners and cigar bars. And you know how men like to do stuff like that, Um, you know, meetings and contracts and, and just supporting each other and probably more so sitting around just BSing more than anything, I would think. You know, and so that is, is yet another, it's like when your mate has other interests that they have outside of work, you should still support them, but you have to still find a balance. So what, what my job is right now is I'm going to have to find a balance because it's bad enough, like I already know we're already together all day, together great. He says, oh, we spend time together because we spend, we see each other all day. That's not the same thing. The time that we're not at the office is our quality time. That's what I would think. By the t- you know, we close the door to the office and lock it, lock the building. That should, it should start from that point. But in his mind, it's like, well, no, because we live together, we see each other in the morning, see each other at night, we work together all day, so what does it matter? You know what I mean? So he doesn't see it as yeah. there's a lot of time away from me, period, on top of all the time that, you know. So that's where I'm saying the balance is important. It, it, it's, but if you don't want to support your mate with whatever their interests are, then you're just not a, a match anyway. Yeah. 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 So y'all go to work together. I mean, when I say together, I mean literally like y'all drive there together and yep. then y'all drive home get together. Dressed. Good get Lord. dressed together. Yeah, we get dressed together. We drive here together. We are here the whole day together. A lot of times he's gone throughout oh the day God. doing other business but business or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then we go home together. That's correct. And then so my thing is if we go home together, now you're going to run off to your – new secret men's fraternity thing or whatever, I would love to support you with that. But I, there's only so many hours in a day and days in a week that we're, we're, we even have a left available. You know what I mean? Because we even work on the weekends. Yeah. We're open seven days, but we work six days, by the way. I didn't tell you that part. So, wow. Yeah. We're open seven, but we don't work on Sundays. But our agents are still here. Some of them come in. 
Um, you know, but yeah, we do. And and Saturdays we're off a little earlier at four o'clock, but still there goes your day and we're here early. So yeah, not a lot of time to really figure out because a lot of couples will look forward to a weekend. I don't know if you notice this. Most a lot of not most a lot of couples will that are super busy. They'll they'll look forward to their weekend. Look forward to you know the what weekend I mean? that have uh, a nine to five job. Well, that's true. If it's a nine to five, if you if you're if you're an entrepreneur, that could be seven days, obviously, at, at any given variation yeah. of 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I mean, in a perfect yeah, world, yeah. everybody would be nine to five. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I don't think the interesting world would be able dilemma, to though. Like <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I was hmm. gonna say, um, what I was gonna ask you about your stuff is, when do you have time to yourself? Like that sounds horrendous. Like y'all are always together. No, see, that's just it. Lately, there's been more time away on his end because of his other interests, um, with this club thing or whatever. So, so there, there is a lot more time away to where I feel like there should be more of a balance where there's not so much time away, especially when we're, you know, that's the only time we have is when we're not working. You know what I mean? So at first I loved the quality time at first. It's been going on for about two months. But now I realize what it is, um, only today. But I used to love it because I could watch all the TV shows that I want when I'm at home relaxing, not argue over what to watch. You know how couples do that sometimes. You know, cook or not cook, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. But there's there's a there is such thing as too much quality time, too, when you are actually not working. When you're if you're by, If you're spending it by yourself, that doesn't make any sense. So... Yep. Yeah. So I mean, I know I, what there. I'm. What I'm saying is, like, to me, you just need a healthy amount of together time, and then right. time with your friends, and then just time by yourself. I couldn't be around people all the time. Like that would drive me. Incra- that would drive me insane. Okay. So okay. Well, like, how is like, like, even if how... we're. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, even if we're in the same house, like you stay in the bedroom and I'll be in the living room or something. I just I need my alone time. What were you gonna say? <laughs> That's funny that you said that because because we have a large home. So when I go downstairs to the lower level to watch TV, he's like, "What are you doing? Why don't you come upstairs and watch it with me?" And I'm like, "Okay, we don't have to be in the same room." <laughs> no, but what I was actually that that wasn't it. <laughs> um, okay, so what I was going to say, jeez, uh, jeez, jeez, jeez. Um, I don't know. This is crazy. I just can't even remember now exactly what it was. It was something really crazy, though. I just can't believe it just went right past me. Sorry about that. Yep. Oh, there must be a lot going on up in my head there. Um, yeah, so, but I mean, like you were saying, the balance, you know, the balance is important. And that's something that is, you've got to figure that out. Um, yeah. yeah. I just can't remember. I and wish it, I could it's, remember. It's just oh, my different. God. It's just different for different people. Like, I need, I don't need, I'm not asking for a lot of time by myself, but I need some time by myself. And I know some people are like, I want to spend every week in second with my significant other. You know, we're always together. We're always joined at the hip. And, you know, good for them. Um, but I think I would love to have a relationship where I'm, like, always, like, we're comfortable enough to be with each other like all the time and, you know, making jokes and it's like my best friend and all that stuff. But I still need, mm-hmm. I still need some time by myself because I am, I, I'm not, I'm not a very talkative person. So when mm-hmm. I have to talk, that's like, I have to get in that mindset to talk and it gets exhausting for me. Like I'm not, I'm not really a talkative <laughs> I can person. Imagine. So right, yeah. So even when I get off of the radio show, I gotta like. Huh, I just except on the show, I know you, you really are more of an in, an introvert. Yeah, I totally, I totally would agree with that. You know what, Kai? This is interesting. What you're saying. Okay, so let me put a twist on this. And by the way, I I, I totally agree with what you were saying. But I just remembered what it was that oh, I am getting old. I can't remember things from one second to the next. But here here's the twist. So how many people feel that? Okay, how many relationships do men? maybe not intentionally kind of push out the idea of their mate having friends and they want to just go out. Like, okay, for example, we spend all of our time together as in I I don't even do anything with girlfriends anymore, but he definitely has friends and he goes out whenever with his friends. I just don't have any other friends anymore because when we first got together, even for the last year and a half, he wanted to just do everything together, just us. 
Do you know what I mean? And so, therefore, there was no room to fit my friends in because we're at work all day. And as I told you guys, I worked six days. So the only time I had yeah. for him, does this make sense? Right. So I didn't see it as an issue. I, it's not like, I mean, I love my girlfriends, but now I feel like there's no, t- okay, now that I need them and maybe want to do that, when you've already gotten to a pattern of spending all your time with your man and vice versa, you don't realize that you lose other people in your life that were fun to be around, that were important, encouraging or whatever, motivating. I don't think that couples should put that much time into each other when it's not healthy to not spend time with the opposite sex, you know, even with your sister for lunch or a cousin or something, not just these two people that love each other because guess what? What what, what could happen to anyone else is what happened to me. I spent so much time putting into him that now he's floating off to his actual friends, and I, I, I no longer have any relationships with my friends for almost two years now. Do you see what I mean? And I've gotten oh, comfortable wow. with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't do anything outside of him. That's what I'm saying. Not lunch with anyone, nothing. It's just him because I'm either at work or we're together. So now when we're not at work, okay, he's having no problem with that. If one of his friends wants to go do something, he's like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll go have some drinks with you. And I'm like, really? And I'm thinking, I'm not upset, but I'm a little bit kind of questioning myself, like, well, it's really my fault because no one should allow anyone in a new relationship to push them to the point where, they just want to spend all their time with them, and then they just literally just abandon their family, their friends, or whoever else. And I know, I know, I know more than enough people that do this, and it's not healthy. It's not healthy. You know, it just isn't. I mean, think about it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't. I've never really had that problem um, because right now I have a business, so I don't really hang with friends anyway. I'm usually working. Okay or taking care of my daughter, especially now that she is uh, homeschooling. So oh, I that's right. don't she really is. hang okay. out with friends. Yeah, it, the friends I hang out with are the friends that, you have. that I... It's for sleep. <laughs> Wait, your friends that are they're not asleep. in front of the TV. Oh, no, really? you said oh, the you little friends that I have, I said is for uh-huh. sleep. Oh. So the little <laughs> friends that I do have, the little friends that I right. do have are actually friends that I made that are parents of my daughter's friends. So, so there's a reason for to, you know, easily be able to squeeze them in for play. If there's play dates with the girls getting together or the, the, the parents, or if they live close by, like neighbors maybe, that's easy too, right? Yeah, it's usually, it's usually when I go to drop my daughter off at their house and, like, mm-hmm. I go say hi, and then we end up talking for hours. Or they oh, come okay. and drop yeah. their kids I off at my that. house and they come say hi and then we yeah. end up talking for hours. Um, right. And then one of my friends that I've had since I was whew, a little girl, um, she has she has little children, so they're like four and two. And whenever mm-hmm. we go over to their house, her children love my daughter. So whenever we go there, they don't want us to leave, and she's always feeding me. And so we end up staying there, even though I have work to do. So <laughs> wow. We end up staying there it's for like hours. It's like instant social so, hour for mommies. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, but I other than that, that. I, I don't, that I, don't have, I don't really have friends anymore because when I had a kid, your friends really fall off anyway. So they do, I've had a couple you have of friends. entirely different responsibilities. Yeah. But, I mean, they can still, my thing is, it's not like they still can't come visit and talk, you know, we're not going out, which I wasn't going out anyway. I'm not really that kind of person. But, you know, the things that we were doing, it could still have been done, you know what I'm saying? So their excuse for us not being friends is just stupid. And I've had some people come after they had a kid, and then realized, oh, this is life. Oh, I'm so sorry of how I treated you. You know, I should have understood more. And I'm just like, well. <laughs> so, yeah, well, so I, I don't Kai, have that me, problem. Well, let me let me ask you this, Kai. Let's say that you had a husband. And let's say that you already know how busy your schedule is because even he, he obviously knows that you're running businesses and things like that. So that keeps you very busy. And you're homeschooling. So there's there's little time, if no time, for actual planned, you know, friend friend get uh, friend events or what do they call them? You know, to get away with friends and have lunch and all that. How would you feel if he still found the time to do that? But yet you're is so. In other words, is your is your busyness just your busyness? Does it affect the relationship or is it separate? So if he said, hey, he he just starts to hang out with his friends 
several nights a week or whatever. Do you, would you find envy and irritation in that because you can't find the time to do it? But, or is it just your busyness because you're running your businesses to where there's no time? And, and your home school, um, your daughter, too, let's, you know, does, does that make sense? I mean, yeah, I understand. Uh, what I find, I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that because it's like, would I, am I jealous that he has time? Is that what you're asking? Or am I jealous that he's not spending yeah, that, that time with yeah. me? Yeah, both, both, actually both. And, and the fact that he, he found time. And not with you, and found the time when you both were. You see, you both have the same busyness. And this, okay, well, let me do it this way. Let's say that your husband ran the business with you, and you guys were totally equally busy because you work together, like like what I just gave you my scenario. So therefore, you're in the same equal busyness. I'm not any busier than than Charles is because we work together. We leave together, even if it's late. We leave together. You see what I mean? So now it's yeah. just an outside interest, an outside interest that creates his new busyness, but at the same time, it's like the only reason why I'm not hanging out with other people is because we always spent all of our time together. Scouters are kind of like, you know, it's not like he's working yet, like runs another business, you know what I mean? And then he's like, oh, my God, this well, is a little bit of time that I have. I want to hang out with my friends. Like, why would you not want to hang out with your girl more often than your friend for the little time that you have? Patrick, hey, welcome. Our time. He's like, let me walk back off. He's like, let me walk back out. <laughs> <laughs> let me sign off. <laughs> All right. And and secondly, to answer your question, well, to answer your question in terms of me, I would be more jealous that he's not spending that extra time with me than I would be that mm-hmm. he has extra time. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be jealous that he has extra time, but okay. if it was able to be spent with me then, yeah, I would be jealous that he didn't spend it with me. Um, in, right. terms of, in terms of you and Charles, you are the one who actually decided to make Abandon your day revolve around him. Yeah. Right. So he didn't do that, but you did it. So, I right. mean, that's just been the pattern in the relationship, so you can't expect that pattern to change. You that's exactly your friends right. and made you know and made your right. relationship yeah, priority your entire mm-hmm. life, but he wasn't right. doing that, so he's just continuing right. on with how he was, and being that it's just always you and him now on your side, being that it's always you and him, and you're seeing him going out with his friends again for extra time, now you're like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? But again, you're the one who made that decision to dump your friends, so. For you to have a healthy relationship with yourself, you shouldn't have done that in the first place, you know? Yeah, you cut down the time you spend with your friends, but just completely, friends are gone, then eh, what are you going to do? Reach out to them now that you need them, like you're lonely? Like, <laughs> right. I mean, if I were your friend, I'd be like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. That's it. That's very true. Everything you said was, ex- you're a fly on the wall right now. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but see, everything, I, I didn't see it coming, though, because we were still spending all of our time together for the first year, at least for the first year and a half. And so, because it's, it's almost two years in April next month. So now, with the last six months, I'm not seeing the slow pattern of oh, let me hang out with my friends. They were calling me. They were in town because everybody comes to Vegas to, to visit. By the way, when I say everybody, I mean the majority of the world comes here at some point. And so every time you turn around, there's somebody that's in town that wants to be taken around. They want to go sightsee, whatever, you know. And so these are just uh-huh. like guys. And so his thing is, well, I would invite you, Shar, but it's just the boys. And you would be bored anyway. You know, we, we're going to cigar bars. We're going to have, you know, drinks and, you know, talk, boy, you know, how the guys do. And I'm sitting here like, that's okay sometimes, but you get, I, I mean, I don't want to rain on the parade, but it's like, well, so-and-so's in town. Well, so-and-so's in town. And now there's this new club I told you about. So that's why I'm like, now that's that's particularly been taking away extra time because there is no time except for when we're off of work. You know what I mean? And that's like I'm starting to yeah. see what you guys have like do club dues and, and uh, uh hazing going on. I'm really wondering. I'm gonna ask them that. I I <laughs> yeah. I mean they I think they'll have club dues but I don't think they go as far as hazing. But that, well, that he called it a, he said the, the fraternities. Boys. It's sort of that was a term he used <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean that was yeah, a term I mean, that he but, used. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. But I was gonna say, yeah, the boys if it's just boys, that's usually a thing for men. They really are just like, it's just boys. We don't want girls there because apparently they can't 
speak the same or act the same if a girl is they there. They can't be themselves. I don't right. know. Mm-hmm. Right. I know. I so know. It's bonding time. In terms of, I get annoyed with that because I hang around guys, and and I tell them to <laughs> act like yourself. Um, but like, if you went, then yeah, you're you're not like me. You're more feminine and girly than I am, so I could understand why they're like, well, it's just the guys. Like, you know, guys' <laughs> friends will actually pull you aside and be like. Dude, why'd you bring your girl? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, like, I'm, sure, actually... I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. So <Yeah. laughs> my thing is you should have kept that healthy uh, balance before you time within your relationship. Yeah. So now you're going right. to have to figure that out, you know? You're going to have to figure that out. Now, if he's just spending all his time with everybody else, then that's different. It's time for you to cut your losses and be out (laughs) but if it's just you know (laughs) it's just you want him to spend more time with you because you don't have friends and your whole world was him you can't really do that you know yeah so you're gonna you're kind of gonna have to figure it out on your end right yeah okay well I hope that someone else is listening to that because I I'm quite certain that I'm not the only one out there not just the radio land but just (laughs) The only one out there in the radio land or just the world that has a dilemma like this because a lot of people do fall into that pattern when they're first seeing each other. They're just, they want to breathe each other's air for crying out loud. That's it. It's just, you feel, you know, when you're first, when you first think that you're in love, that you're really just in lust, you know, that phase. Infatuation, I call it. Infatuation. Infatuation. That's that's it. So you gravitate towards each other. You know, oh, let's have lunch tomorrow. Oh, let's have dinner tonight. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, we want want to come over. The next thing you know, you're spending like 99.9% of our time together, and you're fine with that. Like people that think they're in love and they're infatuation, they love every moment of that. I mean, equally the guys and the girls. But at some point that starts to obviously, but why did I abandon other people, you know, that care about me too? You know, women. I'm not talking about men. Yeah. I don't yeah, hang out with I mean, other guys. <laughs> that is true, but I, I more, I more associate that with younger women uh, than women mm-hmm. mine and your age. We should have known better by mm-hmm. na- by now, um, and you know, you are aware that it's the infatuation stage. So, again, you don't just throw everybody away. My situation is different. You know, if I were to get someone, I, I don't really have friends anyway, so it doesn't matter. But like I said, I need my alone time, just even like if it's just an hour or just a day, I need to mm-hmm. just not talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just, I need just to be by myself. So I, I, I don't want to be around somebody 24 seven, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. But like I said, I mean, there are some people who walk around like, that's my best friend. We do everything together. I, I get it. I understand. And that, that must be great. You know? But even if that were my reality, I still need to give me a couple minutes. Let me just start reading a book or play a video game or watch this movie or just let me do something. Right. We can go back to our 23 hours a day together or whatever. So you don't think it's That's weird if it's like if I'm watching, if, well, yeah, that makes sense. But you don't think it's weird like if I'm, even, I'm watching TV in another another part of the house, I'm watching TV, and he's like, oh, well, well, why are you in there? Why don't you come and watch it with me here, spend some time with me? And I'm sitting here like, we, I mean, we have more than one TV. Does it matter? We're in the same house right now. I just want some time to watch the shows that I want to watch, you know? That's Except not for, weird. That's, that's absolutely normal. You don't always want to watch the same thing he's watching, or maybe you just want to watch this show by yourself. That's absolutely normal. No, is it weird that he thinks that doesn't get it? Like, why are you not wanting to watch the show? Like, watch the same TV in the well, same room? Well, that's what I was going to say. On his end, okay. he's looking. He's, that's his way of telling you that he wants okay. to that he didn't see you enough that day or whatever, even though y'all do everything together. Oh, my God. I mean, everything, <laughs> right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, at least the drive home I would do by myself, like, let me sing and just let loose in my car. Like, oh, my God. No, always together. <laughs> no we ride together. <laughs> my God. You know the funny thing? I, I don't, have, my, I I don't have the BMW couple, anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh. I know a couple who they're like what I mentioned where they're best friends and they love being around each other. They don't work together, though, but they do. They're mm-hmm. always together. But the woman still didn't let go of her friends. She would still go out with her friends 
if it's by herself with her and her girls, which is less, or she'll go out with her and her girls and her husband, which that happens okay. more often than not. But yeah. she has not mm-hmm. let go of her friends. And then her friends still come over to her house, and she'll throw get-togethers at her house. So she hasn't let go of her friends. She's incorporated them into still hanging her around the person her life that now. she mm-hmm. loves the most or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, what it could I have like been that, for you. You could have invited them over to your house or you don't feel that's lonely. That's a good well. idea. That's one way to do you it, You know, right? you can start mm-hmm. inviting them over to your house and showing them that, hey, you know, I'm sorry to drop off the face. So that's a good do idea that. because – yeah, because when we were in the phase of just wanting to eat and swallow each other's air and be around each other all day, we didn't even want friends at our house. Like, we had this big, beautiful, new, beautiful house, and we didn't care to invite anybody there selfishly to do see it and enjoy the pool or have dinner or whatever. And we only did that a, few, a handful of times in the past year or so. So it's kind of like, why? You know, that's one way to get people to stay connected with people is to invite them to dinner and enjoy their company and vice versa, you know. So it's kind of like that's a really good yeah. idea. I think that's the best way. I, yeah. Yeah. So you know yeah, what? I we haven't said anything to logic except Hi, total. logic. So logic. I know. What we're talking like, about what is the, how to keep about your all these <laughs> women talk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what we were talking about is how to keep your relationship alive when life gets busy. So Char was just telling us about because I, you know, I was asking her, being that her husband is a business owner and. You know, she does work, even though she works with him. How do you, how did she keep her relationship together? And that's how he got into this. And I also asked her, like, when she was in the industry and she was very busy, when she was traveling and everything, how did she keep her relationship together? So really her answer is, in the industry, you can't be with anybody who's not in the industry because they don't understand how busy you are or whatever like that. Um, And they get jealous thinking that you're cheating on them or whatever. Outside of the industry, she was saying with Charles, they always see each other. So there's no issue there, but her issue was that he is spending time with his friends and now he's added an extra uh, activity on to spend with his friends. So that was her issue. So that's what we were going through giving advice on. Um, So... What I'm going to do, actually, before I go to Logic, I'm sorry, Logic, I know we, like, teed you up and you're about to start, but before we go to Logic and ask him this question, um, I'm going to go ahead and go to commercial. I've been in that situation where life was busy, uh, and did it affect his relationship, and how did he deal with that? And then um, we will talk about how, like, we'll give advice on how you should keep your relationship alive when life gets busy, and we'll take your questions, which the funny thing is, the questions that came in are just basically, it's almost all the same, it's just worded differently. Like, I'm going to read the questions when we come back so y'all can hear it. So, in the meantime, we're going to go to commercial, and we'll be right back. Hi guys, Kai here from No Conduct Radio. I found a book on Amazon, I know, I know, as usual. This one is called Forgotten by the Sun by Celeste Eisman. It's about Amika Fernandez's life, which is nothing out of the ordinary, until she meets Rain Wilkins. Soon captivated by his very presence, Amika finds herself wrapped up in this mysterious intruder into her world and the secrets he's brought with him. In a world where nothing is as it seems and stories once believed to be mere myths or anything but, an ordinary teenage girl must decide between the life she knows and the life she might have, if she can handle the truth about the world in which she lives. You can find Forgotten by the Sun in Kindle and paperback on Amazon, but for easy access, you can go to our website, www.noconduct.com, and you'll find it right there under NCR's books. Again, that's Forgotten Son by Celeste Eisman on www.noconduct.com. A bare wall doesn't qualify as art, but a movie poster does. The place to get a movie poster to decorate your wall is JustMoviePosters.com. There are posters for dramas, rom-coms, blockbusters, and more. Most items are priced between $7 to $15 plus shipping. Go to www.justmovieposters.com to find the movie poster of your dreams today. That's www.justmovieposters.com. 
And we're back. So we were talking about how to keep your relationship alive when life gets busy. And if you have any questions about that, you could actually call in at 607 603-5378. That's 607-203-5378. Or you can text us at 484-840-3627. So with that commercial, the Just Movie posters, I should should go to that website and see, like, exactly what they have because – that will kind of fit in with my daughter. She has posters all over her, over her wall. I didn't grow up like that. I didn't even have a picture on my wall. My, my, my parents wouldn't allow that. And I think that's why I'm so lax with my daughter. I just Since she was little, she, had, she started off with Tiana and Disney cars, and now she has cats. And then now she has, she has cats and she has Naruto and some of the anime because she's into anime now. And I think before she had some posters from books she likes. But posters is just, she loves posters. <laughs> and I, I am not mad at her because I'm like, you know, express yourself. Hey, what, can, what harm can it do? It's just on your room wall. So I think I'm going to check out that website. And as far as the book, Forgotten by the Sun, you can go to our website after the show as usual, www.noconduct.com, and you'll find that book right under NCR's Books. Um, so what I was saying before we went to break was logic. Have you ever had that issue where, you know, you're, you, you got busy with work or with life or whatever. And, um, how did you keep your relationship alive when that happened? Or did it affect your relationship so much that it didn't keep it alive? Or how did you deal with that? Um, I mean, like we've already discussed, um, communication is where everything starts off at. And beyond just communication, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, some people will feel pressure to say, you know, okay, yeah, you know, this is what you want to do. I support you. And, um, you know, We'll do whatever we have to do to keep the relationship going, but they also they know deep down inside that they're a person who is who requires certain things. You know what I mean? Like some women out there need your attention constantly. Some men out there need your attention constantly. So you know, in order to not sound like a a, a selfish person or whatever, they a lot of people will feel pressure to say. Oh, no, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. You know, as long as blah, 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 you know, we'll we'll be okay. Knowing that they're not the type of person that can really deal with that. So you, it starts off, you have to be honest with yourself. If you, if you have a certain requirement in a relationship, otherwise you will not be, it's not possible for you to be happy, then don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't tell that person that you can deal with it or, don't lie and say that you can do something knowing that you're not the type of person to do it, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Like the thing that I hear a lot of girls going through right now is they're trying to keep up with a, uh, like a, a certain type of image now that women have. Like you have to have something going on, whatever it may be, like a a, a business or a career of some sort or whatever. And if you're not, like a lot of these young girls who are trying to keep up with this um, neo-feminist image of a woman, they kind of feel like if they're just somebody's wife or girl or they're just living a family life, somehow they're not living up to their full potential. But for some people, that's really all that you might have, you know what I mean? If you don't have any other focus, if you've never thought to do anything else or ever had a a talent for something else, then how are you going to force something, you know? And vice versa, some guys out there may feel, you know, I got to be doing something because this is what a lot of women are saying that they want. Let's just say, for instance, there's a lot of women saying, I want a guy that has a business and blah, blah, blah. But if you're just some... Uh, just a working guy You just want a good job 
enough to pay your bills and come home and chill. That's who you are. And just you need to be honest about who you are. You know, as far as um, Char saying that you can only be with somebody in the in show business if you're in show business, I don't believe that. I think you have to have a clear understanding. Like if <clears throat> if that other person is not in show business, then you need to have a very direct conversation. Like everything is going to be me putting everything into my career, and you as somebody who is not in show business. You're just going to have to wait until I have the time. And not saying it in a jerk way, but it's like you're just being honest of what it's going to be. You know, it's not that you don't love them. You love them. They might be your favorite person in the world. Whenever you have any free time, you want that time to go to that person. But you might be in a very demanding job. You know, it's the same thing for business owners. You know, their their job is very demanding. They're constantly working. You know, even when everyone else leaves for the day or, you know, whatever contracts they're part of, maybe their client is done, but they're still handling closing business in that contract, and then they might have beginning business in another contract because that's how business people work, where one contract ends, another begins, so it's just constant, constant, constant work. A lot of women can't handle that. A lot of men can't handle that. I want my woman here. I want my man here, whatever it may be. So I think the the biggest thing is I think anybody can be together. It's just you have to understand what that's actually going to mean. Yeah? So your advice for keeping a relationship alive when life gets busy is just communication? Yeah. Uh, you, you were and honesty, I guess. You two, the two oh, of you were sure, talking over each other. It's just great advice. Sure, I was just saying it's great advice. Thanks. I just said it's great advice. That was it. <laughs> I just thought it was great uh, advice. No, I, I was saying, yeah. so your advice to deal with your relationship once life gets, you know, busy is to just be honest with each other? No. You have to, you have to talk to each other before it gets busy, before you start anything. You can't wait until it starts to become difficult to then assess the situation or or even if you agree to it you i mean technically you can do whatever you want, but it it's it's bad form in my opinion to wait until the situation is knee deep in the soup for you to then start thinking, "Well, I didn't think it was going to be like this, and then now it's like what you didn't you talked about it. If you talked about it, you know, but again, if you fell into that trap of you were saying something and not really thinking about what it was going to be, you were just in a rush to be in the relationship or you, you felt at the time, well, I handle anything, but now that you have to deal with the reality of it, it's a, it's a different story and you don't feel like dealing with it. That's, to me, that's juvenile behavior, you know? That's like declaring war, and then once all the death starts, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't think uh, I was going to feel like this. <laughs> what did you think it was going to be? I think it's true. Yeah, it's like you yeah. can't, you know, you can't wait until the situation is there, you know? You just you have to talk about it beforehand, which is the reason why most people relationships don't work, you know? And, and I'm not even, like, average or regular relationships where people aren't, you know, like, you know how many people get together and they don't talk about finances before they start, like, thinking they're going to move in and stuff like that? Like, they don't they don't ever talk about how much debt do you have? You know, did you go to college? And, okay, what's your college? Is a, you know, uh, what are we, or do you have insurance? If it, You know, are you going to pay that extra whatever out of your check or set aside extra so-and-so every month? Just in case you go on disability, you got the long-term version and not the short-term version, you know, because I can't handle these bills by myself. How many people think when they have kids, can I raise this kid by myself if my partner dies? People don't plan for that. But next thing you know, you might get a phone call. It was a car accident. So-and-so's gone. 
Now you're a single parent. And you got four kids. And you didn't think it was just going to be you with four kids now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you really don't think about that stuff when you get married, have kids, have kids. You don't really plan for, uh, am I going to be the only one raising them? Or are they going to be here by themselves? Yeah, people don't plan for that. Um, I think people just think about the most ideal situation and go that route. It's human nature. Um, BJ's here. Hey, BJ. Yo. Hi, BJ. Welcome. So, <laughs> yeah. Long day. Are you you sound a beat like you're ready mm. to go to bed? No, nah, no, nah, not yet. Long day. <laughs> um. So our topic was how do you keep your relationship alive when life gets busy? So we were about to take questions. Um. But since you're here, have you ever ha- have you ever fallen into that situation where your life was busy, and I guess you had to find ways to keep your relationship together, to keep the spark alive in your relationship. Um, and if not, did it affect your relationship and how? What, like being busy? Yeah, you know, both of y'all working, or you just working a lot, or she just working a lot, or... Oh, it's called uh, planning, you know, and having a plan. Yeah, you gotta have a plan. You can't just go in and just, you know, of course things are gonna fall apart if that happens, but no, I gotta have a plan. You gotta sit down and begin. You can't just like, yeah, well, I wanna do this, do this, and let's just do it. Nah. Mm-mm. No, I haven't had that problem, no. Because I had a back plan, like, if I stop, you know, if I work slow down, whatever, back then, and, you know, she is, you know, she'll have that part deal with, part deal wise, and, you know, it's just like a plan, you know. Mm-mm. So did you ever have have it where it did affect your relationship? Have you ever experienced that though? Like even if y'all planned, um, and then it, it came well, up, and I don't know, maybe he or maybe you were like, or she was like, you're working you too he? much, and it, I'm saying you, like in terms oh, of okay. you to her or she to you. Oh, I didn't okay. mean that you. Oh my god. Anyway, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, well, that part. I'm like, what? I'm not missing Yes, that's that. what I'm insisting. But no, um, <laughs> yeah, well, that part, yeah, I mean, I work a lot. I was working a lot. And that affected the relationship, but, you know, I had to find time for uh, me and her. So, you know, that was, like, major trying to uh, re, um, revamp my, um, how I, uh, my work ethic it was. Because back then I was, like, all about focused on what I'm doing, what I'm doing, even though I was in a relationship. And I te- even up to the day, I tend to forget that I'm in a relationship. And I'll focus on what I'm doing and just, like, I can see you once a month or just, like, nothing. And it is what it is. And um, that's something that I dealt with for, like, a long time. But, you know, because I work like that. That's my work ethic. So I tell people to get a relationship with me. Don't hang to see me every, well, every other week or whatever. You'll see me maybe once a month or it is what it is because I got a goals that I got to hit. So that, that up to date, that still affects my um, relationships. I mean, yeah, what it is what it is. That's that's my um. Um, issue. How did, how did, well, were you no. that busy when you were married, though? Yeah. Because I was trying to get to this point. Yeah. So, okay. she, she, so when um, you were she, married she and you were that busy. But she okay. understood going in. That's, That's what the I was thing. Gonna I didn't, I didn't marry this. If you know, oh, you busy now? I forgot to tell you I've been busy. You know, I got to do this. I got to go here. I got to fly here. No, she knew, she knew going in was, was what happened, though. You know, I didn't give her, you know, I ain't blindsided. So I gave her, you know, a choice to either step aside or continue on the journey with me. So she continued until she um, tripped on this, you know, guy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> had an affair. Had a fair. So, so, so other than, so the busy didn't have any any factor in the downfall of your relationship. It was just her tripping. Well, and she would probably would say the busyness probably would have was, but it's not. I, I don't, I don't, you know. I could see we, if I was that busy, she could, you know, we could sit down and talk. But don't just go out and have an affair. No, nah, that's not. Nah, that's please. I don't. You can't tell me that kind of crap. You can't see me that. Nah. Mm-mm. Hey, but um, BJ, BJ, yeah. um, hi. 
Yeah. Okay. How are you I doing? agree I with you. Uh, did she I, say I, hi? Hi, by the way. Hi, yeah, BJ. Yeah, how was your week? Like, like I'm a guest or something. How was your week, BJ? She's like, yeah, BJ, Shar sh- 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 here. Hi, how, how are you week? doing? How was my week? Uh, my week yes. was oh, good. My week was good. That was the question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we're great. I'm so glad to hear that. So my question is this. Um, yes. Do you feel that uh, did you feel that that excuse is used quite a bit in relationships where um, you know the has, let's just say the man is or one one part or the other is not spending enough time with that person so therefore they feel like they can get that attention from yeah I mean, I mean yeah I mean, I mean that, that's that's a possibility yeah I mean if you're but can you really see, can you see why some women find that to be legitimate because they feel like, yes, you're working well, no, hard, no, no, you're no, providing, no. but... No, it's not legitimate. You, you can't legitimize that no, because I see what you're trying to go okay. with that no. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was she trying to legitimate, legitimize... Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Yes, yes she was. <laughs> oh, God. It's so common. I wow, figured that was very common. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's common, but it's not... It's not an excuse. Okay, let me give you an ex- Let me give you a, a scenario. I know someone who was married, and the guy worked a crap load. He had maybe one day off, and on that one day he would play video games. And so she would complain to me that he's playing video games, and and why isn't he taking me here and doing this and doing that with me and like leaving the house. And I had to remind her that, you know, this is his one day off. Like, he just wants to chill. Why don't you go chill with him? Like, make some spaghetti and y'all sit on the couch and eat it or watch him play video games or play video games with him or whatever. Chill with him. But this right. is his one day off. Like, you want him to – because getting up and going out and stuff is still work. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, <clears throat> of course, she doesn't listen to me. She listens to all her other friends who say cheat because I've actually heard oh, women. I've other had women tell me. I've what? had women, I've heard women, and I've had women tell me, if your dude is busy, find another dude in the meantime until he's no longer busy. In the meantime? I, look, I'm not even making this up. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I, I, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> so I I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one who was telling her to sit and spend time with him because I know a lot of women hate that their men play video games. They're like, ah, oh, you're not a little boy. I'm pretty sure they were in her head telling her that or in her ear telling her that and then telling her to go, well, if he don't have time for you, then you need to find somebody that got time for you or whatever. So anyways, so she completely poo-pooed on my advice and she did cheat on him. Uh, not only did she cheat on him, but she did some Why other slimy. No, 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 she didn't get pregnant. Oh. She did some <laughs> other slimy stuff, like with the mortgage and stuff. And then one day he came home and she was gone. Damn! Wow! So I, I, like it, I like it. I like it. So, <laughs> so fast forward, she got married. Okay, so she's in the infatuation infatuation stage with this guy, married this and this and this. She yeah. has a kid. Happy with her kid, blah, 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 life is good, you know, how life gets busy with your kid, and she's really close mm-hmm. with her family, so she's with her family, and she works, and she just got a promotion to manager, and all of this stuff. Well, her current current husband cheated on her, and what? his excuse was because, his she excuse was because she's, his excuse, what? <laughs> anyway, his excuse was because she didn't have time. You know, so oh, she's all distraught you know. and this and she's distraught. Like, I can't believe this happened to me. All I want is this and this and I'm a good woman. And of course, I have to wow. say, wow. <laughs> I have to say what she I wasn't have giving to say. The like, oh, man. She wasn't woman. giving the husband enough time, but she left the first one because he wasn't spending enough time with her. So isn't that the cot, the cot, the pot, the pot calling the kettle black? And isn't that just karma? Is that is my understanding? Well, that's person? what I was thinking, but if I said it out loud, I'd be a dick. So I just you kept would. it to myself. <laughs> and out you loud, would. I have to say, oh, yeah, he's so wrong. Poor you, girl. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. But in my hold head, on. I was but, like, but, you did but, the same but thing. But you was her friend, and you could have you told straight out and said that. You could have told her that. Why you didn't you say that? Her other friends told her cheat last time, so why you just why you hold to bite your tongue? Well, what's the pronoun we're using here? Her. 
If it was a dude, no, I would definitely I, listen, tell there's, him that. There's, there's no excuse for that. I think that's the biggest problem No, right I'm not now saying there's an excuse for cheating. However, now you know how it feels would have been my thing. Like, I told you no, how but, but you should have conducted. No, but that's my point. I think, I think the issue that's going on with women nowadays is not enough other women are G-checking these chicks. And exactly. saying, wait a minute, you cheated on your dude, and you did this, and you've been running around meeting dudes on plenty of fish, and now you expect to find true love? Like, you're a scumbag. Do you understand? You're beh- Like, if a man says it, it's yep. just him being a man and he's complaining, or this is what you hear a lot, too. When, when men complain about women, they either say, oh, who hurt you? Or you're bitter. Or uh, uh, something in the effect of, you're just basically you're just bitching, you know. But right. other women don't check women, nope. and that's the problem. Mm-hmm. If a man says it, they can just mm-hmm. dismiss it, like oh he's just whatever. Women need to start going back to like they did back in the day and calling a woman a slut when she's a slut. You can't yeah. act like she's okay. She's not okay. That's the that's the reason why. Amber Rose runs around with her head held high because not enough women are saying, I'm not interested in your advice on relationships. You're a whore. No offense. Okay? I'm I'm in a regular relationship. I don't bang dudes to pay my rent. That's what they need to say to her. So she understands that she's a whore. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's not how women work. That's how these women work. We know this. That's what we were saying. (laughs) I was going to say, that, 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 was, that was my I mean, point. It's a woman, so I'm, that's going to turn into a whole yeah, different what, what, argument. Okay, see, DJ, I don't understand my, my point. Saying, my point, saying, listen, my point is that's the reason women are this way now, because you have not, you've gotten out of checking each other. Women used to check each other back in the 50s and 60s. They yeah, used to yeah. call a slut a slut. That's why women tried not to be sluts, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because women will call those things out, men felt comfortable with saying, yeah, I don't want to be with a slut either. They would bang right. these chicks all day, but they would never marry these girls. That's why women in those days used to move and go to another town and start yeah. over because they were a whore back in Shady Acres. But then they would move out to so-and-so and become a whole new person and clean their act up. That's why... The aunt used to raise the kid that she had because back then, if you were a certain age and you had a baby, people knew, oh, you were a little fast-ass hussy. That's who you are. I ain't marrying you. So <laughs> other people used to raise the kid because it was shameful. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I got pregnant. You didn't look pregnant a month ago. Well, yeah, but where's your daughter at? Oh, no, she went to boarding school. Why? What? What happened? They, that was why they used to do that kind of stuff because once you was a hoe, it was over in that town. You, yep. you, were you ain't getting married. But yeah, now married. we've gotten to the point where we want to accept slut behavior. So, of course, men, more men are raised by women nowadays. So being with a slut, if mama's a slut, then <laughs> you getting with a slut is not a problem because that's all you ever saw growing up. Your aunts are spinsters who are by themselves with kids and no man. Your mom is grown, you know, kid with no man. So when you get with some other slut who got kid and no man, it's not a problem. That's that's like home. So you've gotten into this horrible place now, where whole behavior is not a problem anymore. The norm, and it's, it's actually it's actually um, encouraged. Yeah. So well, that it is it is in the media, but logic. The only issue that you're missing is this. Back in the, in the day, it was so. No, yeah. Well, for example, you just said Amber Rose. The media is magazines, TV. They push slut, slut, slutism. That's what they push. You know, okay, let, all right, let me let me t- let me but tell you. But that's not what I was going to say. Hold on, hold on. That's let me tell you this. Mm-hmm. What what's still considered bad form is a man going out here and pimping all these women, getting them to come <laughs> over and banging them and kicking them out while they're still in the, in the process of putting their shoes on. Nobody likes that, okay? Back in the right. day, that was a horrible thing. And to this day, it's still a horrible thing. If somebody, if any actor you found out was just smashing chicks and throwing them out and laughing, people would stop liking that person. 
like, oh, he's a he's yeah. scumbag. Why would he do that? Well, or or if he actively told you, yeah, I go out and I find women who have low self esteem and I bang them and get what I want from them, ah, ha, ha, and just laugh about it, people would be like, ugh, <laughs> this dude's horrible. Now, back in the day, it was considered a shameful thing for women to go out and look for men with money and hustle them yeah. to get their bills paid. It used to be shameful. But at some mm-hmm. point, now society says, that's okay. Or in an, even in some ways, it's funny for a woman to hustle a man out of his money because, girl, he better pay for this cookie. You know, so look now, at, look at because yeah, look we've at accepted that's okay, that's what's being pushed in the media. Just like back in the day, it used to be a horrible thing to be gay. Now, it's not. So in the media, they're so comfortable with pushing, you know, characters right. out there that are gay. So we dictate. What is okay? It's not the media yep. that dictates it because they're selling yep. the products to you. So and if you decide, yep. I yep. no longer think it's okay for black people to be relegated into the background. I want to see more characters up front that are black and, you know, strong-willed characters. Then they, once that movement starts in society, the media will follow suit. They're not going to tell you, no, that's not what you're ready for. We're going to tell you what you're ready for. No. So the reason, all these, I'm going to get into something controversial, but the reason that you still don't see a lot of black people at the Oscars and stuff is because black people don't make it a problem. Yeah, they get online and they complain a little bit. And, oh, the white Oscars, blah, blah, blah. But are black (laughs) people still demanding a certain change by not going to the movies, by <laughs> deciding that I'm no longer going to watch these shows or whatever. Like, you can dictate what you want. And then furthermore, white America, if white America was so open and understanding, like, yeah, that's wrong, would they continue to watch things like, I don't know, uh, James Bond that never had a black leading character in it ever? No. They would stop. Because they would say, this is ridiculous. This is, not, this is not even reality. This guy is in England, and there's no black people. What's going on? What are we doing here? It's like one person. You know, none of these other agents are black people. Like, they would start to ask these questions and demand it to be updated. But if you don't see it, it's because they don't ask for it. Mm-hmm. So basically, Shar, what he's saying is that it's not the media who starts this, it's it's society, and then the media joins in. So, you know, basically answering what you were saying. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, let me get to these questions first because we only have 11 minutes left. And like I said, the questions are basically all the same, just different ways it was worded. Um. So how do I stay strong in a relationship where my boyfriend is too busy with his work to give time to our relationship? How do you stay strong? What, what was, wait, what, how does she word that? Well, well how do we... How, how do I stay how strong? Do wait, Char, wait, Char. They, they don't understand the question. How do I stay okay. strong in a relationship where my boyfriend is too busy with work to give time to our relationship? What if he's not being honest, though? What if he's just using it as an excuse? I mean, that you is work. a good excuse to tell anyone. You you don't want to but, what is, but what if what, he's working? working, for real? Like, what if he's yeah. working to be able to afford a ring for her? Could he, you know, maybe he couldn't okay. afford it. And he's that's, trying to work overtime yeah. to be able to afford a ring or be able to afford an apartment or be able to afford their no house. Or well, right. said, what if um, he's building if a said, business? She said, sit down and talk yeah, to him. Yeah, she said, what if he's... What if, yeah, talk, communicate, talk I to him. was in... I think she should remember that she is not the only one in that relationship. It's not about how much time she thinks that they should yeah. be spending together or whatever. Every relationship has an ebb and flow. There's going to be times that you have time and mm-hmm. he doesn't. There's going to be times that he has time and you don't. And then there's going to be times where you can meet up and love each other and, and, and be riding high. And that's that's the that is what the relationship really is about. It's not about how much 
you get what you want and how, how often it happens. It's about making it through the rough times to enjoy each other in the good times. And, and it's going to be it more a, rough times than good times. Right. If she's making it a rough time, rich. when I talk to him, he seems like she's not talking to him, you know, when she uh, worried that question. She seems like, you know, she holds to herself, and she don't want to, like, sit down and talk to him, you know, unless she's just saying, like, when are you going to take me out, that kind of thing. When are you going to take me out, you just work too much. And she's coming like that and him like that on that and that that side. That way, he's going to say, well, I'm working, you know, she might get an argument. But she got to sit down and have some sense, like, let's talk about this, you know, because we, you know, spending time. The way she's going, it would be like, um... You know, I can I cannot be what strong stay strong in relationships stay strong in relationships. No, that's, you got to speak to them, talk. Damn. Yeah, y'all got to talk yeah. about it. You got to let them know that you know you need more time. Yeah. And yeah. Well, she's just worried, basically spell everything strong. out. Like, like, like she's gonna cheat. Like she's gonna cheat on. Them. How can I say you're strong? That, that, like yeah, right. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's the thing. If you <laughs> if you feel like you can't take it. That he's working a lot, then he just needs yeah. to leave. Don't cheat on the guy. If that's well, what that was going to be my question about. to Shar. Why does Shar keep going to? What if it's just an excuse? Like, why do you keep thinking that a dude would will be using his job as an excuse? Why is that prevalent in your mind? Um. Okay, well, that was not a personal response. I just have seen that happen quite often with people. You know how many you know how many affairs are found out? Maybe I watched too much Lifetime. Do you know how many yeah, affairs are found out? I, you guys know that, so I'll let you elaborate there. Yeah, but here, here's, sure. but, but here's the but, thing but, with I mean, that. But it turns out to be that they lie. They, that's an excuse. Anyway, you can't get upset with someone for that. You cannot get upset with someone for... Thank you. Um, you can't oh, get no. upset with anyone for... Oh, just... Uh, excuse me, everyone, but my man just gave me a kiss on the forehead. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, oh, he just in to give me a kiss. Oh, oh, anyway, here's the point. Um, you can't get upset. What is that? Go ahead. Go ahead. You can't get upset. Go ahead. No, okay, you can't get upset. Here's the thing. It's kind of like the rule, the golden silent rule. You can't get upset with someone for working so much to make a better life for both of you, okay, right. or even for themselves. And Okay, so no, because it's just you just be a dick to be like, oh, well, you're not spending time with me. But... Because of that, it's an easy slide-in for someone who is actually seeing someone on the side having an affair. It's an easy cop-out for, all, now, for anyone. If he, if Think he about changes, it. It's a shame, but it can happen. With her, if he changes uh-huh. behavior with her as far as um, physically or uh, any kind of, you know, emotions, of course, she can, you know, the red flag will come up. But um, if he's, uh, like, working, coming back home, back, you know, going to work, coming back home, but if he's uh-huh. not, like, weird, like, no touch it, don't kiss it, don't, you know, whatever, you know, make love, whatever. If you start doing that, then yeah, but don't, you know, say like somewhere to slide and you cheating on her. Yeah, you know, you could be, so, so BJ has yeah, a good point, true. everybody. That, BJ has a good point. Look at if it's, if it's patterns change, because that excuse is an easy one, I'm telling you, ladies, for your man to get away with. But look at the pattern. If his pattern changes, or if it doesn't, and he's not, you know, wearing a different type of cologne, he's not, you know, acting differently cologne. towards you intimately or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, well, they say when a man is seeing another woman, they'll change the way that they dress. They'll go, go out and get a new type of cologne and you, things you, like you, that. You, you know? back into the old school. You know, you're actually, old school actually, you, Char, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, those are all cliches because sometimes yeah. nothing. Yeah. Thing changes. <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes. You just no, but, but B, it, no, but like BJ just, said, there usually is a pattern though that changes if if that's the case. You know, so I don't know. I mean, in rare cases. trust your dude or not. Those are the two options that you have. So okay. Um, so and if he is working late, that, maybe you that, need to just trust that he's working late, unless you are actually see a text from a woman saying, "Hey, baby, it's nice seeing you last night." Or you find panties in his car. Those are the two things. So, <laughs> or uh, other than that, don't power, cause right. trouble where trouble wasn't in the first place. Okay. Um, I listen. Next I hope question that was great is. Advice. Next question is how does a re- see? This is like the same thing. How does a relationship survive <laughs> when uh, both of us are busy with school? Again, you just oh. have to talk to each other, communicate with each other, and see if you can make some type right. of schedule where. Like maybe Fridays, Fridays, I don't know, after school between <laughs> 6 and whenever the crap, you, you, that's, that's y'all time. Like you don't go out with friends. Like you know how most people are like, let's go to the club. You don't, you don't do that. You spend time together. So y'all just got to communicate and make a schedule for each other and stick to that schedule. Um, again, same question. How do I keep a relationship with someone who's very busy with work? Same, same, same answer we have. That must be 
they're just, very popular all the questions you, came and were really similar. How do I stay yeah. in a relationship with a busy woman? Same answer we're giving you. Communication, like come couple, together. Yeah, together. Yeah, the same couple. The same couple. Um, <laughs> the same couple. By the same <laughs> I know, <way> right? <laughs> you know, an easy, a easy way. An easy way to get people in the right state of mind is to ask yourself if you got busy and you really were happy and, and loved this person in this relationship. If you got busy, how patient would you want them to be with you? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're only thinking but about what you're not again, getting. That's a hypothetical. That's a hypothetical because, of course, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'd want them to be very patient. I would be understanding. But then when it comes down to it, like. Well, but see, that's what I'm talking about. Like it's, it's people being selfish. You know, you right. – you have to really, truly, like again, you know what I said, be honest with yourself. Are you being selfish? Because if you know that this person is not doing this on purpose, why are you upset? <laughs> you know, if if they're if you're not if 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 the bills are tight but you're not going under, and this person right. is picking up extra hours in order to make the money, and let's face it, not to be a chauvinist here. Women typically don't bring that much money to a relationship. So if one day you want to get a house or you want to have a ring or you've been casually talking about, I want to go to the Bahamas and it looks really nice down there, then this guy, <laughs> if he's a regular guy, what you're saying is equaling money in his mind. He's, th- he's not mm-hmm. thinking about, oh, I would love to be with her. It'd be walking on the beach and <laughs> enjoying the sunset. That's not how men think. So when you say Bahamas, he's thinking seven hundred dollars flight round trip. Oh, and yeah. a, oh, I like it. Go to this place to have a beach, beach front, and blah blah blah. Fourteen hundred dollars, and blah, he's adding all of this up in his mind. I need twenty four hundred dollars <laughs> plus an extra five six hundred dollars spending money so she can have a good time, and we're not going to be sitting around eating uh, cupcakes and whatever. We need to be able to go out, blah blah blah. Then the kid, we got to have something to do for the kid, so the kid is going to want a jet ski. So that's another five six hundred dollars, blah blah. So he's adding on. Up in his head, and it's, I need overtime. Overtime, six thousand dollars. Blah blah blah. Okay, so that's about yeah. six months hard going. So by the time October hit, I can do it. Wow, you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's doing it, and you're it's like, you're looking a little dismal right now. Me. Yeah, you're just gonna try to be right So that's, right that's when the argument. That's when the argument that's starts. Life. That's, that's, that's when the life. argument that's starts life. of. Do you know how much I'm, I'm out here working for us, and I'm the one that's putting up blah, 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 because I'm trying to get us here. Like, that's when he starts to yep. itemize what he's doing. And then women think, it's not all about money. Why are you doing blah, blah, blah? <laughs> So it now it goes back to feelings for her, and that's when the cross-communication is getting lost because he's yeah. literally working like a dog because he loves you and wants you to smile. And be mm-hmm. happy. Yeah. But all you're thinking about is time is not there. Time. And he's yeah. thinking the time is not there because I want her to be happy when I pop these tickets on her on any yeah. given Thursday. Like, yeah, pack your stuff next month because that's what I do because I'm a man. Look at that. And she'd be like, oh, my God, and you're so complaining. sweet. She's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and you're complaining. Well, real quick, because we have 60 seconds left, so let me just read off the rest of the, the questions because they're basically all the same. Um, how do I keep a relationship together when we don't live together and we're both <clears throat> and we're both uh busy in college? Uh we go to the same campus but we do have different schedules. Same thing communication planning. Yeah. Uh this one is kind of going in with what we answered with Shar. She's in a relationship but her boyfriend is always busy with his personal life. Um but the difference is he replies late to his text. And he still complains oh, wow. about her cheating on him and not having time for him. How can I resolve this issue? So I guess she cheated on him. He's kind of like staying out away from her, and he's complaining about it. Basically, I don't think I think you either gotta give him time, or this relationship is not mendable because he seems to be really hanging on to the fact that you cheated on him, and he's like he wants you, but he doesn't want to be around you right now. Um, That's true. That's and him school. complaining wow. about you that's, not having time awesome. for him. You complain about uh, him complaining about you not having time for him, but he's always with his friends. That I, that's crazy. I no, no, no. Now listen, listen. No, no, no. Because she's oh. talking like a chick. If 
if she cheated on him, because some women have this little attitude where if they cheat, then they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, let's work on it. And, but they're not really doing any real work to mend what they broke by cheating on this dude. So if she's not available and he's retreating to his friends to kind of, he don't want to think about how he feels or wants to forget about it, it's mm, possible he doesn't want to that stay she's by himself not to be giving in his him head. that time and not, yeah, yeah, not being as as available as she should be. So therefore, he's le- like he doesn't want to sit around and be a sucker and be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just waiting for you to show me that you care. Like he's just going to keep he's going to yeah, go. Exactly. Not <laughs> try not to think about oh, it. Oh, okay. So basically, the advice to her because we're actually off air, so we need to wrap this up. The advice to her is to she needs to be patient and give him time. Yeah, she needs to put the work in to repair yeah, the relationship. She, yeah, cause she, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's it, yep. Okay, so last question that came in is, we're so, we're slowly drifting apart, and I feel that it's painful, but how do you keep up a relationship with a very be, uh, busy person? Um, I know he's mm-hmm. worth it. It's the oh, same you know thing. Like, see, these are all the same yeah, you know he questions, just <laughs> different wording. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, you said she, but I know he's worth it. Communication, planning. Yo. All the listeners had a meeting. Tell her, tell her. Yeah, I know, right? Get a hobby or something. Get a hobby, you know. Yeah, so the same thing I told Char at the beginning of the show. That's how you do it. There. <laughs> so I do want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Even though we had a slow start, because it started off with just me, and then Char trickled on, and then Logic trickled on, and then BJ. Oh, it was. It, so I do want to thank wow. y'all for yeah, yeah. I do want to thank y'all for joining us tonight. Uh, next week we're taking your relationship questions, so make sure you get it in. You can send it to our email, noconductradio at gmail dot com, or text it to our hotline at four eight four eight four zero three six two seven, and we'll get those answers right on to you on our next show. Oh, you can also go to our relationship group, which I have a bunch of questions on there that we need to answer next week. You can also go to our relationship group. Oh, what's that noise? Relationship okay. health. Somebody has our the show playing in the background. Anyways, relationship, relationship health question and answers on Facebook. You can put your questions in there. If you put your questions in there, there are a lot of people in the group that will answer the questions, but we'll also – uh, ask the questions live on air, and you'll get your answer that way also. So, anyways, we'll see you next week right here on No Conduct Radio with relationship mm-hmm. question and answers. Peace out, everyone. Peace. <laughs> good Lord, that was the deadest goodbye ever. Shar's tip of the week, take a walk with your lover before bed. Now, that, that at least there's something for them to go home with for the rest of the week, right? Something for everybody to oh think about. God. Take a walk with your uh, That is a good that. idea, though. S- surprisingly, yeah. Char did give a good idea. So, yeah, <laughs> You're take, a, take a walk. <laughs> That's for busy couples. That's for busy couples. That's for busy couples and for anyone. Okay, have a great week, everyone. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.